Here we are. All the comforts of home. <laughs> Even a shower. <laughs> George? Oh, oh. <laughs> no worries, George. We get rain six months out of the year. So the tents are waterproof. What's that? Cook. Well, I've, I've never heard of an animal called a cook. <laughs> cook isn't an animal. Cook's a cook. <laughs> wow. That was neat. Uh -huh. Thanks, that was a great meal. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll set up our beds. Uh -huh. <gasps> oh. These were the biggest footprints George had ever seen. He wondered who or what made them. Everyone else's footprints went one in front of the other. Huh? But these footprints were side by side. Huh? Uh -huh. And they were really far apart. Uh -huh. Was uh -huh. by hopping. Rabbits hopped. Maybe it was a giant rabbit. Or Clowns have big footprints. Maybe it was a hopping clown. Or maybe it was a giant hopping clown rabbit. <laughs> George, it's bedtime. <laughs> you want to stay here? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. Better leave my hat here, since you won't be around to get it back for me. <laughs> Bye, George. Be a good little monkey. <laughs> There were those footprints again. Only now, the giant clown rabbit had a tiny friend. It looked like they'd stopped here for a drink of water, but then the smaller footprints disappeared. Could it be? When clown rabbits drank water, they could fly? weren't made by a hopping clown rabbit. They were made by a, a, whatever this little guy was. They were back at camp. Hopping sure made a monkey thirsty. Maybe his friend was thirsty too. Only he had a bowl to feed him with. It'll dry out and be as good as new. <laughs> George's new friend looked cute in the man's hat, but he couldn't keep it. Bigger, whatever it was. His small friend couldn't fly. He'd just been getting a ride. George had to get that hat. They were pretty still when they were drinking. But that watering hole was too far away. By the time George got there, the animals might be gone. If only he had his own watering hole. George realized he did. He just needed some place to put it. And a lot of water to put into it. He hoped his friends were thirsty.
George was happy to have the man's hat back. But he was sad his new friends ran off. George, you won't believe it. Sea cows are amazing. You want to see? <laughs> sea cow? That didn't look anything like a cow. George, what happened to the rain cover on the tent? <laughs> no worries, mate. Yeah, long day. I could use a nice bath. <laughs> oh, this day just keeps getting better. Turn around and I'll show you my favorite Australian animal. <laughs> His friends were back. Those are kangaroos. So that's what they were called. They really like to eat grass. Just put it on the ground right beside you. And that's when George decided kangaroos were his favorite Australian animal, too. That's the Aussie way. It's a super spy's job to discover secrets, and Double O Doggy is the best. <laughs> he has lots of tools to help him. Oh, that's a periscope, remember? Well, inside the tube are two mirrors. The mirror at this end reflects whatever it's pointing at to a mirror at this end. That way, Double O Doggy can see things without being seen himself. <laughs> All right, good night, little spy monkey. <laughs> can we meet an hour later? A super spy had to be smart, quiet, and quick with his hands and feet. He'd only been a super spy for two minutes, and Double O Monkey already had his first spy mission. Find out where the man with the yellow hat was going to get him. But he had to make sure he wouldn't be seen. George? Hi, how you doing? What? George? A barking turkey was even worse than a puddle. The last thing a spy wants is to attract attention. It should be here somewhere. <gasps> George? Huh, that's funny. Your baby looks just like my monkey. <gasps> I, I mean, uh, he's, he's a good-looking monkey. I mean, oh. It was hard being a super spy without the right tools. George's periscope worked great. He could see between things, over things, around things. eye on the man with the yellow hat now. <gasps> A broken 
periscope can't stop a super spy with tools like a mirror and the brain of a monkey. This is very good. Really? But you know, it, it's not nice to spy on people. And can ruin surprises like this. Now, do you want an official double O doggy periscope, or would you rather just make another one? You're a super spy monkey. You need lots of ways to keep your eyes on things. Come on in, guys. Thanks for letting Hunley spend the night while I'm gone. <laughs> and this is a list of everything Hunley needs and when he needs it. <laughs> oh, that's quite a list. Bye bye. Bye. We'll make sure he has a good time. Uh -huh. Hundley was used to keeping everything in its proper place. <laughs> to make him feel welcome, George decided they should play with Hundley's toys. <laughs> so, while I do laundry, would you like to feed Hundley, George? According to the list, it's time. The cup had to be filled to the top line with dry food. <laughs> Hundley didn't want it above or below the line, but exactly right. <laughs> Next, add one half cup of water. food thoroughly. Waiting for Hundley to chew wasn't George's idea of fun. George couldn't wait to find out what was next on the list. didn't seem to like the monster show. Maybe that number was his favorite channel. George was sure Hundley would enjoy the monster show more than poodle groomers. Bedtime for monkeys. Oh, dachshunds too. To make sure Hundley wasn't trying to tell him something important, George checked the list. 
Uh -huh. Hundley didn't want to play. He always slept with Squeaky Mouse. Squeaky Mouse helped Hundley sleep and kept nightmares away. Hundley was very happy to have a friend like George who would get out of bed to kick Squeaky Mouse off the balcony? George was having a bad dream. And he didn't have his own squeaky mouse. Whoa. Hello, Hunley. How you doing, boy? Was he any trouble? Not at all. Right, George? <laughs> Hunley says thank you. Dogs and monkeys don't always understand each other. But sometimes a squeaky mouse can tell you who your real friends are. George couldn't wait to play with the band. Until one day... Huh? <laughs> Sorry, but the bandstand had to come down. It was old and unsafe. Yeah. He had no idea where they lived. George did know that they sometimes played in the Plaza del Sol subway station. He decided he'd look for them there. George was at Endless Park. Plaza del Sol was the next stop. So all he had to do was take the subway uptown. This was Plaza del Sol, all right. But the band wasn't here. Is that you, George? What are you doing here? saying that they took down our bandstand. I know. We were sad when they told us, and I wanted to tell you, but I didn't know where you lived. The burritos are vegetable and cheese wrapped in a tortilla. Buen provecho. That's my mom, Maritza, and you know my dad, Luis, and my uncle, Felix, and my sister, Cecilia. Marco tells me you're feeling sad about the bandstand, George. We are sad, too. Yeah. We tried playing in the street this morning, but it was too noisy. It's worse than the subway. It was nice to have a place where people could actually hear our music. Hmm. Eating great food, talking about music, it reminded George of the last time he'd been at Pischetti's. Excuse me, coming through. Isn't it great? Everyone has come to hear the band. <laughs> Pischetti's might be fine for a man with a violin who could go up to each table to be heard, but it wasn't working for a whole entire band. Okay, so we need a room big enough for the band, but not too big, a high ceiling, but not too high, and no lions or carpets or waiters. <laughs> Hi, George. Uh, uh. And hello, friend of George's. Hola. Are you coming to the opening tonight? Marvels of the Maya. <laughs> it's our biggest archaeological exhibit ever. There'll be food and lots of people. Bring your friends. Lots of people? Was Marco thinking what George was thinking? Wait! <laughs> 
Yes? Um, do you think you might want some music tonight? My family has a band. Music? Oh, fantastic idea. Seven o'clock. See you then. <laughs> this is a little tune we wrote called Hooray for George. don't really have a place to play. Not since they tore down the bandstand. Oh. Hold it, hold it, hang on. This band is unique. If George is your number one fan, then I'm your number two, which is why I've just decided to build a new bandstand. And I'd like you to perform on opening day. Really? Okay, it's a deal. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the all-new Glass Bandstand. Please welcome Lobos de Plata. Hit it, George. <laughs> Thanks to the new bandstand, Lobos de Plata sounded great even when Huntley joined in. <gasps> hey, Allie, George, Bill, what are you doing up so early? Looking for the Perseids. Oh, they're beautiful. Have fun. Yeah, <laughs> this way. Keep your eyes open. The Perseids should be around here someplace. Grandpa said you can't miss them. Ooh! Shh! Oh, oh. <gasps> Shooting stars! Wow! Ah. Be sure to save some pictures for the Perseids, George. <laughs> okay, they're here somewhere. Do you see them? Bill, you go that way. Me and George will go this way. Aye, aye. <gasps> He's waving. Bill's trying to tell us something. Huh? He's saying, go, go this way. what you're saying. It took both hands just to keep his eyes open. What are you three working on so hard? <laughs> Shh. 
It's a surprise, Grandpa. Hmm. Well, this should wake you up. My super spicy hot curry soup. <laughs> hey, be careful. It's zowie hot. No problem. I love spicy stuff. The spicier, the better. <gasps> Bill, do you think you should... <sighs> there! See? Huh? What is it? What do you want, a napkin? <gasps> Bill was pointing because he needed a glass of water. What is it, George? <laughs> How is pass me the water a code? <laughs> water. <gasps> oh. George realized their code could be a lot simpler. <laughs> One flash meant nothing here. <laughs> Two flashes. <laughs> I heard a sound. Hey! <laughs> it came from that direction. Okay. <laughs> it came from that way. George, that's great! It's so simple and clear. Not bad for a city kid. <laughs> so the next morning, with their flashlights and their new secret code, the trio set out to find the Perseids. Oh. Okay. Oh, whoop. Sorry. Wow. Hurry up. Operation Perseids is on. Go, go, go. One flash. Bill says there's nothing there. Oh. Two flashes. That means they heard a sound. It came from over there. George? <laughs> okay. <gasps> George! <laughs> nothing, nothing. Nothing! All we have is a bunch of pictures the of... The Perseids! What? Where? Right there! The Perseids is the name of a whole bunch of shooting stars that you can see every August. Ah! Wow! And George caught them on film! Pretty good for a city kid. <laughs> You're the best, George. Oh, what a nice surprise, you three. <laughs> now, how about some cocoa to warm you up? Uh-huh. Is it spicy? Ah. Oh, quite a show, huh? Ah. Oh. Oh, wow. Even though they weren't creatures who looked like purses, the Perseids, or nature's own flashing lights, were pretty amazing to see. Why don't you go hit a few while this fella and I pack up for the move? <gasps> George had no time to lose. It had been hours since he last golfed. <laughs> Bill had warned George that a golfer had to be careful. He could lose his ball in a sand trap or a water trap. Uh -huh. ah! Or a squirrel trap?
A Lord Agreement says the castle's owner must show the deed every year or pay the back taxes. And I cannot find the deed. Oh. Oh. I could help you pay the taxes. Oh, we've not paid in over 400 years, laddie. I may not be good at math, but 400 times anything is a lot of haggis. Well, maybe I could help you find it. What's the deed look like? It's very old paper, and it has the family crest on it. The dragon in the yellow tam. It was a secret passageway. There was nothing like a big stick to get you out of a tight place. <laughs> or into one. <laughs> Luckily, George found a bridge. <laughs> Unluckily, it was raised. <laughs> if you could push windows and pull bookcases, <laughs> maybe you could spin wheels too. George couldn't figure out why the squirrel wanted his golf ball, since he had so many of his own. This looked just like the dragon Uncle Tam told the man with the yellow hat to look for. Ah! Huh? We're out of time. Give up. I have to give him the castle. I won't give up. Is this it? No, a dragon's in a red tam. Is this it? Not blue, yellow, yellow. Have you looked in the mirror today, laddie? Um. <laughs> Master Tam, I'm here to claim the castle. Hand over the wee keys. <laughs> George knew they'd be happy he found the dragon and wanted to show them right away. He needed as much leverage as he could get for this shot. Here you go. It's all yours. <sighs> I cannot believe it! It's a deed! Where did that come from? Oh, this is great! They looked even happier than George expected. Not only did Uncle Tam get to keep his castle, but George had his first hole in one. <laughs> now, if he could only get his ball back. A big duck would make a terrific photo. Ooh, yeah. A giant duck with a snake's tail would make an even better picture. <laughs> but a huge snake with duck feet would be the most incredible photo of all. The strange tracks suddenly stopped. Huh? 
Did the duck-footed snake fly away? Or maybe it was because nothing could leave tracks in hard stone. You can't leave tracks in water. But you can make tracks with water. George remembered he'd seen big tracks like these. In a book. There they were. Dinosaur tracks. A duck-billed dinosaur. George got a photo of Jumpy by leaving out food. Couldn't he do the same with a dinosaur? What a prize photo that would be. He didn't have any dinosaur food. But maybe they would like fruits and vegetables. George was thinking about something bigger than a fawn. Much bigger. Those tracks couldn't possibly belong to a meat-eating dinosaur, could they? Could that be the dinosaur? George decided to warn the man with the yellow hat that a hungry dinosaur might be visiting. <gasps> the dinosaur had returned from the water. The tracks were headed towards Bill's house. Hiya, George. Did you see the fawn? <laughs> yeah, I guess those do look like dinosaur tracks. Yep. My new boots were hurting my feet, so I put these on to walk to the lake. I told you I was going swimming, remember? Uh-huh. Hey, now I know what it's like to walk in a dinosaur's footsteps. <laughs> With no hungry dinosaurs around, George still needed that special photo for Nature Week. It sounded like Jumpy was hungry again. But George had enough pictures of that squirrel. For such big animals, those deer left pretty small tracks. Hey, deer tracks. Wow, you used fruits and vegetables to lure the deer to our house so you could take photos? <laughs> Look at these wonderful deer. Oh. How did you manage to capture such amazing photos, George? Oh, you know George. He just used his imagination. Isn't that right? <laughs> the 
eggs were still warm, but if Dumpling didn't come back soon... <gasps> George decided that if Dumpling wasn't going to sit on her eggs, he'd have to do it. <laughs> Carefully. <sighs> well, sitting on a nest, hatching eggs, is actually pretty boring. <laughs> no! <laughs> this I've got to get on tape. Bill here bringing you a feast. A city kid sitting on a nest of duck eggs. George, why are you sitting on a nest of duck eggs? <laughs> wow. I don't believe it. A duck is hatching right before my very eyes. On camera. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Rankins, you don't want to miss this. Your ducks are hatching. We'll, we'll be, be right, right there. there. <laughs> <gasps> All the eggs are hatching. There's the proud mother, Dumpling Duck. And here's the fourth duckling being reunited with its family. <laughs> Did the duckling think George was its mother? <laughs> George, what are you... Hey! Hello. <laughs> George had to set this duckling straight. His mother was a duck, not a monkey. I'm sure your little duckling will be a regular duck family member by tomorrow. The next morning, George was eager to see how his duckling was doing with his new duck family. Here we are on day two of the Duckling Chronicles. Look at that! The fourth duckling is with it. Oops, spoke too soon. <laughs> George had to show the duckling that monkeys are one thing and ducks are another. Farmer Life Magazine? How is that going to help? Ooh, ooh, ooh. George wanted to show the duckling that in a typical duck family, there aren't any monkeys. <laughs> That wasn't working either. Maybe if George showed him how to act, the duckling would get the idea. It looks like George is trying the make like a duck maneuver. <laughs> like only a mother duck can. And so, the duck...
ducklings were brought together by this daring rescue and by the kid from the city who helped to hatch them. Fantastic! Ending. <laughs>